Hi guys, um, I've had a lot of people messaging me recently on how I make um, my stone and concrete look like um, the real thing. So um, what I thought I would do is a quick tutorial um, just to show you guys how I um, make the concrete and stone look realistic um, with the just simple dry brushing um, and then hopefully it will give you um, guys some idea of how to do it for yourselves if you want to. Um, at the moment I'm working on a Ghostbusters uh, dio and um, I'm currently dry brushing um, the concrete towers that I've built all out of foam and uh, so I'll show you how I uh, dry brush on uh, these pieces here. So what I basically do with all of my um, all of my dye work, I always base coat everything in black, um, unless obviously I'm working in something in, in white, like my uh, Alien dye, then I just painted that um, straight white, but 99.9% .9 of the time everything is base coated in black and matte emulsion. Um, you can use black acrylic paint, that's no problem, um, it's just that I obviously use an awful lot of black um, base coats, so I buy the, um, the big tins of uh, vinyl um, emulsion because um, it's more cost effective for me for, to do it that way but like I say black ac acrylic is um, absolutely fine um, so I've base coated this piece all in the black matte emulsion and um, what I'm going to do now is just show you guys how I um, dry brush it to make it look like concrete so I'm just going to do a little bit on um, on the pyramid part here so basically what I use is a brush like this for large pieces um, and this brush here is um, a really cheap brush. I bought it in a uh, little DIY store locally to me um, and it, this brush was 59 pence. So it kind of gives you an idea on, um, you know, you don't have to spend a fortune on uh, materials. So 59p um, is a pure bristle brush um, and it's not too soft and it's uh, not too so uh, not too hard either because you don't want a really hard brush but you don't want it so soft that it, it just kind of you know falls around so um, sort of a medium bristle uh, like this one here um, and what I do is I will get my acrylic paint I've got my uh, my little paint board here which I just keep using and using and the acrylics I use um, for dry brushing are just these simple it's probably back to front to you, to you guys I'm not quite sure with the uh, with the iPad but um, yeah the um, these little uh, crafters choice um, paints they basically come uh, from I get these from the range um, I think you can get them in little um, sort of uh, craft shops art shops but um, they only cost um, I think it's about £1.29 I do actually get them in a lo local store to me um, which they're only a pound um, so you know they're pretty good and they do actually last a while because you don't need a lot of paint for dry brushing so you don't need again to spend a fortune on paints you can if you wish um, but you'll get the same results at the end of the day the only thing I would say with these paints is that they're a little bit thinner than say for instance the um, acrylic Reeves acrylics or something like that so the better quality acrylics will be a little bit thicker in consistency um, which is fine, but I actually find the, the, the waterier they are, the better it is for me. That's just um, a personal thing. Um, so I think you probably find these are easier to work with. Okay, so that's sort of a, a little shout out on the paints. So basically what I do is I put my paint on my board and I get my brush and I just dip it in. So I don't lag it, just enough to sort of um, get on the brush there like that. And then what I do is I've got a um, paper towel okay and what you do with the paper towel is you basically what you put on your brush you just brush off which seems a bit odd I know but you do you just brush it off so there's no sort of big globules of paint left on it and then what you do then is you get your piece and we start rubbing okay it's a little bit of practice doing it because sometimes you might end up with a bit too much um, paint on your brush but if you do start it and it feels like it's going it's too thick then just um, brush it off a bit more and it'll go for a fair way and yeah, let's just keep rubbing and rubbing you can put a, quite a fair bit of pressure on and rubbing it just last a while and there you go you can see now in comparison to the, the that side that starts to give you the, um, the sort of uh, concrete stone effect okay so what I would do then is that I'm just going to go around all of my 
add a little bit more paint onto my brush okay and then again just wipe it off and then rub it on it's actually quite therapeutic i find it thera therapeutic but i'm a little bit sad right now <laughs> some people might find it boring um if you find it boring you're doing the wrong thing because uh, making diodes is a lot of dry brushing if you want it to look realistic okay there you go so you can see there so basically you just work up your layers of how light or dark you want it to be what you can do with the greys is you can use different tone greys so you can start off with a darker one and then work your way up in layers let this layer dry and then dry brush in a lighter color what i tend to use is this one for sort of concrete stone this color um, and then what I do once it's dry, I dry brush it with a white, which just makes it pop a little bit. And then what I do then is I weather it with my uh, inks and my pastels just to give it a little bit of, um, of wear. But basically that's it. So that is the long and short of it. It's not difficult. And hopefully that's giving you guys some ideas on how to, uh, to make your roads or walls or anything like that look a little bit more realistic. Okay, hope that was some help. Bye.